Welcome friends to another r slash I don't work your lady video. If you can go ahead and hit the like and subscribe button down below, I won't ask for your manager, I promise. And our first story of the day is by Tokyo Diamond, sad but true. Hey y'all, it's been a minute, unfortunately it happened again, but in the worst way possible. Now I will say that I did fit the description of this kind of worker, but I definitely didn't do this kind of work at the time. So here's what happened, and bear with me, it's kinda long. January, my family and I all caught COVID. My daddy made the rule, no one goes out and no one comes in. So after my last trip out of the house, I stayed home. Apparently this said rule didn't apply to him in his mind, so he decided to go hang out with people without a mask. Then caught COVID, then passed it to my mother, and my mother passed it to me. When I found out my daddy had it, I cried. And as sad as it is, I didn't cry on his behalf. I cried for my mama because she already has high blood pressure, diabetes, etc. So adding COVID to the list scared me. Tuesday morning, my mama and I went to get tested. Made a list of things we'll need and gave it to my brother through text to bring and leave at the door. Wednesday morning, mama was feeling worse, so we took her to the hospital. Oxygen level was low, so they kept her and found out that she did in fact have COVID. And pneumonia as well. Y'all know I cried again, right? So now I'm home with my pops, trying to work on myself and him and get the house ready for when she comes home, because we were told she was going to get better. I won't go into details of the two weeks mama stayed in the hospital, but when she was coming home, daddy asked her doctor if she was COVID and pneumonia free. All they said was that she was good to go, sent her home with one oxygen tank, no breathing treatment, and said that they'll give her other tanks the next day. Tuesday, January 26th, my mama was not in the best shape when she came home. Hyperventilating like crazy, but it never lasted over three minutes. January 27th, she was trying to get used to being home. Now, I'm already a certified caregiver. I've been her personal caregiver, and I used to work outside of home before daddy made that rule. So I was excited to take care of mama again. January 28th, mama's 65th birthday, I walked in the bedroom and said, Hey there, old lady, how you feeling today? She looked at me and said, I'm fine, but if you call me old one more time, I'ma hit you. I laughed so hard I snorted. Her petty threats used to crack me up. Then I noticed it's my mama's birthday. Turn up time. I said, hey ma, did you know today was your birthday? Again, she looked at me and said with a smile, Yeah, I knew. I was waiting for Yoslo behind to say something. I smiled at her and said, You made it 65 gracefully, mama. I love you. Somehow, she knew something was going to happen, but I was in denial. January 29th, 11 a.m., Daddy called me in the room and said Mama was hyperventilating again, but it was well over three minutes. Heck, it went well over seven. I rushed in the room and Mama couldn't calm down. Now, I already had my scrubs on because when I'm taking care of my Mama, I'm in professional mode. So I'm in the room, checking her pulse, her blood pressure, and everything. I said I was finna call the ambulance. She didn't want me to, but I looked her in the eyes and said I'm calling them anyway. Now, I'm gonna paint a small picture. I live in a small city in Alabama. You'll drive right through it if you don't notice the signs. We have an ambulance here, but they were on duty. So 911 sent an ambulance out of a different city. It's decently far from our city. I called twice to see where they were because mom wasn't calming down. Now I'm getting scared. She was on her back and I kept trying to get her up. It wasn't working. She was moving her leg and that's how I knew she was still with me until her leg stopped. Then I was trying to perform CPR. Then finally the ambulance came in. I do apologize it for being so long. I had to paint the picture for you all to understand what's about to happen. So they came in. I quickly moved out of the way, hoping and praying she just passed out. Again, in denial. But when they checked her, Mama had already flatlined. Mama was gone, y'all. The woman I shared blood with. She had passed with me holding her hand. I screamed, hollered, kicked and knocked stuff over. I had a full-on fit. Then one of the men walked up to me and said, Don't you think it's unprofessional of you to have this episode over a patient? You do know you're not supposed to become close to the clients at any point, right? Y'all, I'm already crying hard, not to mention I have to call my big brother and tell him that our mother passed. And she passed at home. With everything going a thousand miles per hour, my words don't come right. So I politely told him, I know her. He's going to tell me that it doesn't matter. As a caregiver, we're not allowed to be that close unless we're off duty. And even then, if they're not blood related, we can't talk to the patient. I'm still crying, mind racing. Can't even believe that mama just left us and he's trying to start. 
So I look at him and tell him, no, I literally know her. She's my... The man cuts me off and asks for my company name and number and my boss's name so he can tell her how unprofessional I'm being. Right now, I'm not in the mood. So I gave him the name, number, and everything and went back in the room with mama and daddy. He held on to her and wouldn't let go until the coroner came. So it was my job to call everyone and tell them we just lost mama two and a half days after she came home. First my brother, while I'm calling him, I hear the ambulance man over the phone. Yes, this is Timothy and I'm here at Mrs. Duncan residence. One of your employees here is being very unprofessional in her job and I would like for you to talk to her. I don't want her to get in trouble but please find some training for her so she can perform better in her line of work. So they ask for my name. He asked and I told them my last name was Duncan. Didn't click right then for him until I heard them say, Sir, I don't know who you are, but Miss Duncan has been on leave ever since January 1st. Mrs. Duncan is her mother. Wait, did Mrs. Duncan pass? What happened? Timothy looks at me all shocked. I rolled my eyes and kept talking to my brother, telling him get here now, mama just left us. My brother was driving like a bat out of heck. The man came up to me and said he apologized for accusing and assuming and he's sorry for my loss. I didn't hear any of it. I was close to passing out because everything sunk in right there that I'll never hear my mama's voice again. My brother got there and he had a fit. Now my five foot eight and a half behind gotta call my six foot eight and a half brother down. When the coroner got there, the men left in the ambulance. So first off, my greatest condolences to OP in the situation, it's absolutely tragic. Not only what happened, but the fact that the hospital was just in such a apparently bad situation where they had to discharge somebody that wasn't ready to be discharged. So in a moment like this, where there's emergency personnel there, and they see somebody who they believe is a hired caretaker who's supposed to remain professional throughout everything, and let's say they were a hired caretaker and they did care about the patient and they were acting out. Do you think it would ever be okay for an emergency personnel to come up to them and say, hey, as a hired caretaker, you're not supposed to act like this. You shouldn't feel bad about the patient, essentially. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Our next story is by Yes It Matches. You have to work here. You're a woman. First, I did in fact look like an employee. Second, although I am in my early 30s, I'm often mistaken for someone just out of high school or a college freshman. Third, even though this literally happened an hour before I'm posting this, all the quotes are to be understood as to the effect of and not exact wordings. My local hardware store is full of helpful hardware folks, which means there's not much of a uniform, but floor associates wear bright red vests and managers wear business casual with a name tag. I was wearing khakis, flats, and a cute red micro plaid button up top. I was on my way home from a blissfully short day at work, so I figured it would be a good day to get some tools to make some simple repairs, and some materials for a remodel that my partner and I have going on in our second floor bathroom. I was trying to get a couple of items from the top shelf, but only being a touch over 5 foot 4, I have a bit of an issue, especially since they're the last two on the shelf. I managed to get the first one batted into my hand, but the second one is pushed just back far enough that I can't exactly reach it. Enter Jethro. Jethro walks over and with a, let me help you missy, grabs the box I'm trying to reach and hands it to me. Thanks. I keep my prey short because I'm not sure if he's just trying to be a good guy and help me, or if he's of the train of thought that a woman does not belong in a hardware store except to be a cashier or arm candy for their husband. He wastes no time removing any doubt. I can't believe they would make you pull items and not let you have a step stool. I say, oh, no sir, I don't work here. I start, only to be cut off by Jethro. You have to work here, you're a woman. What else would you be doing in a hardware store? And why doesn't Jeb work here anymore? That old boy was one of the best, blah blah blah. I honestly toned him out at that point. I roll my eyes, figure I don't have time for this, and start to push my cart away from him. This spurs a bellow from the depth of Jethro's beer belly. Don't you walk away from me, I'm a paying customer. I spin on my heels. Listen here, Billy Bob, Joe Danny Frank. I understand your original confusion, unfortunate fashion choice on my part. But I already told you, I do not work here. Thank you for getting the blubs for me, but really, I do not work here. I'm here because I'm remodeling my bathroom. I yell back at him. His tone instantly changed to the sickly sweet, implied bless your heart, with every line. As he said, 
Redoing your bathroom? Well, I just happen to be a contractor and I can help you with all the permits. He says that before giving me a long, hard leer, like I was a gorgeous porterhouse steak cooked to medium rare and ready to be devoured. And I'm sure we can come to an agreement that it will make it both our whiles. Instant mouth vomit, figuratively of course. But before I can say or spew anything, enter the hero of our story, Ben. A few things about Ben. Ben is an imposing wall of muscle, literally was a brick layer for years, before he retired and then agreed to help his friend, the owner of this store. Ben may look like he could rip the arms off a Sasquatch, but he's a gentle giant. Ben pulls a move straight out of the Karen handbook and clears his throat, getting both Jethro and myself to look over to Ben. Jethro, you know darn well that Jeb was fired because you shared your misinformed, misguided, and misconceived notions on who should and should not be allowed in this store. This is the early 20s, but not the 1820s. I've had enough of your racist and misogynistic BS to last me a lifetime. Set your cart down and walk away, you're no longer welcome here, Ben said with a barely concealed rage. Jethro started with the, but Wells, but Ben cut him off with a curt and authoritative, no. You leave now, or the police will come and make you leave. And with his ego massively deflated, Jethro left. I was able to finish my shopping without any further harassment, after Ben apologized a couple of times, and we did have a good laugh about the fact that I did look like an employee. Yeah, I don't know what world Jethro's been living in for decades now, but like, would it ever have been weird for women to be in a hardware store in the last 40 years? It's clear that Jethro doesn't actually believe something, he just has a certain limiting expectation on how certain people should act in his eyes. Or to put it bluntly, misogynistic. And our final story of the day is by Akichi1, Lady Snatches Dinosaur Model Out of My Hands. So I was heading to a toy store, name redacted for privacy's sake, because they'd informed me that they had the new Coelophysis model made by Safari LTD. I didn't have that model in my collection, and I usually order my models there, and I have a good enough relationship with the store workers to let me know when a certain model on my list is available. Or sometimes I prepay them to have a certain item in stock and they always have provided. So I go into the store, wearing a red shirt because I felt like it, and normally the toy store workers wear red, but they have tags on, so you know where this is going. So I enter the store and ask if they have the Coelophysis, and they point me in the right direction since in this case it wasn't one of the models I prepaid them for. So I see the Coelophysis among other models, it wasn't the only one, and I get my hands on it. When I take it off the shelf, a lady says to me, Oh thank you, I can take it from here. I turn around and see this lady that looks like she's in her late 30s holding out her hand to me, expecting me to just plop the dinosaur in her hands. I was looking confused for a moment, and then she got frustrated and asked me if I was hard of hearing. I asked why she wanted me to hand over the model I wanted, and she asked what I meant. I was an employee. I suddenly got her assumption and told her that, no, I don't work here, I was just a customer. She fumed and pointed out that I was wearing the same shade of red as the workers. I responded that red is not exclusive to the store, and if she would excuse me, I was going to purchase the Coelophysis. She then got intrusive and started asking why would an adult collect dinosaur models? I responded that people are allowed to have hobbies and tried to move on. Apparently not satisfied with my answer, she blocked me and freaking snatched the Coelophysis out of my hands and went to the counter. I was about to shrug my shoulders and grab the spares, not wanting to escalate, until I realized that she had also taken the other Coelophysis models on the shelf. The other remaining models were of Brachiosaurus and Microraptor by the way. A little bit infuriated at this, but keeping my calm, I went to the counter and asked her to give it back and told the people at the counter that she had snatched the model out of my hands. They asked her if it was true, and she actually told the truth, but only because I was being a bad employee, lying about wanting the model for myself and not providing good customer service. Now, the counter workers who had seen me enough times as a consistent buyer pointed out to the lady that I wasn't a worker, and she got huffy. She then said that she was a proper purchaser, because she was getting them for her kid, while an adult shouldn't be playing with toys, that maybe if I wasn't collecting them I would properly become an adult. So one of the counter workers called the store owner, who came to ask what was going on. After explaining, he had a frown on his face and went to check the security footage. 
After seeing that she had snatched it out of my hands and had escalated the situation, he ordered her to give me my safari model or he would have her ousted from the store. Now, the store owner is a big guy, so she withered under his gaze a bit and gave me my safari. I calmly thanked her. I really didn't want to have to deal with her any further and the store people, but I will admit I did enjoy seeing her crumble at the sight of a very annoyed, burly guy. And now, I have a Coelophysis in my collection. Who collects dinosaurs? What are you doing buying X amount of the same exact model? It's one thing buying them for your kid or whatever, but like, all the same model? If you were going to get multiple for your kid, wouldn't you want to get different kinds? I love that that's what I'm hung up on. But with that being said, that's all the time we have for today. So of all these stories I've read today, which is your favorite and why? Let me know in the comments down below. And if you haven't yet, if you could like and subscribe, that would mean a lot to me. Whatever you do, whether it's liking, subscribing, turning notifications on, all of it helps grow this channel and I appreciate the heck out of it. So until next time, I'll see you all tomorrow with some more stories.